Before we get to evolution, there's something we want to talk about first. We're actually going to go all the way back to Greek philosophers. Why, you ask? That's because context is everything. The order in which things are discovered or, discovered or um, invented affects what we discover or invent afterwards. And the uh, non-scientific assumptions of everyday life um, will affect our choices in science, whether that is uh, religious beliefs or plain old everyday racism. All, the, all of these affect how people view the world and what we are more likely to discover or what we're going to investigate in the first place. So what does this have to do with evolution and biology? Um, well, Plato and Aristotle came up with this idea called essentialism. This came from the Greek word eidos, which means idea or archetype. Um, you might also hear this called typological thinking. Um, so let's talk about the allegory of the cave, if you've heard this before. Um, this was a thought experiment. So here you can see there's a bunch of people chained up and there's a fire behind them and they're looking at a wall. Under this, um, situation people can hold up things and you, these poor people who are chained up for really no reason can only view the shadows of these objects on the wall so they're going to be able to get an idea of what you're holding up but they really don't know what's going on or have that many other ideas about it and this is a thought experiment for how they thought things were realized in our world so somewhere there's a perfect archetype of a chair and every single chair in our world is an imperfect realization of that perfect archetype. So every chair out there is different from each other, but these differences are just imperfections from this perfect archetype. And we can take this even further and apply it to everyday species. So let's look at an example. Since I love tarsiers, let's look at the Philippine tarsier Carlito cerecta. So here are three different pictures. You can see these individual tarsiers look a little bit different. There's some color variations in their fur, there's some variations in their eye color, and some of them have slightly larger eyes than the others. So are these differences simply imperfections to be ignored because they are um, deviations from the perfect Carlito cerecta, or are they interesting in and of themselves? under the umbrella of essentialism, all differences in biological species are ignored because there is this perfect archetype of what a Carlito cerecta is. So you can tell under the idea of essentialism, we actually just ignore a whole lot of variation. Um, and this actually impacted how people used to collect specimens for museums. Um, especially with birds, they would go out, kill a bunch of them, and then they would pick out from the ones they killed and just bring back the most beautiful specimens to house in the museum. So this um, skewed how we viewed different species in biology because we were only looking at the ones that were the prettiest. But let's go back to what uh, essentialism is and a few other uh, consequences of this idea. Um, so with essentialism, if there are distinct different archetypes, there are discontinuities between each type. Everything is complete and distinct and there are no gradations in between. But there's also the immutability of each species under this paradigm. So that means each species is perfect and unchanging and cannot change over time. Um, and that also means that natural forces in the everyday world cannot change biological species. This eventually was developed into something called the Scala Naturae, or the Great Chain of Being. And here we have a hierarchical ladder of life. So this is a classic illustration of this one, though it is a little bit hard to interpret. So I prefer to look at these ones here because they have a few more labels and are easier to see what's going on. So here in our labeled one, it actually um, includes minerals and rocks. So at the bottom are things that are not living. That's our at the bottom. Then we have the realm of becoming, where things that are alive but you know don't have a brain going on here are plants. Then we have animals, man, demons, angels, and of course God at the top. Um, and this one doesn't show the gradations within the animals, but even within the animals there was this ladder of um, certain animals are lower and less advanced and going up with humans at the top. So here, everything is evol uh, arranged in this very hierarchical and linear fashion. 
Um, we also, of course, call this typological th uh, thinking because we have essential ideas or types that we are talking about. And this was really the status quo for hundreds of years, and this really impacted how we viewed biology. Um, and so this meant, means whenever we're discussing evolution, this is our null hypothesis that the theory of evolution had to overcome before it could be accepted. So can you explain? What is essentialism and why is it important for us to understand?